One of the most important areas of succeeding in property investing is finding the right area. Now, when you're looking at the cash flow strategy where you have sufficient rent to cover your monthly expenses, uh, the areas that don't work are your more affluent, higher income suburban areas. Uh, the areas where your cash flow tends to work are more in your lower income slash inner city type environments. Now, when you are looking for the right investment area, you have to consider whether the yield is strong enough, so i.e. is there enough rent to cover the monthly expenses? And the second, uh, and probably the most important element, is the risk that you're investing in. A couple of weeks ago on the uh, September of 2021, I had a, a guest speaker on my webinar by the name of Michelle Dickens. She is the founder and CEO of TPN. And during this webinar, she shared with us the top performing suburbs of 2021. In this short educational, I will be taking you through a specific province's performance and which are the highest rated suburbs in that province. So here we have the Gauteng province and uh, a nice snapshot of some of the top performing suburbs, giving you a quick indication of what the vacancy rate is, which is in gray, the good standing ratio, which is in green, and then the gross yield, which is in, in, in dark blue. Now, as an investor looking at this data, the first thing that I'm intrigued by, or the first thing where my attention will go is the gross yield. So uh, I ideally am looking for a 15% gross yield. That usually is enough of an indication for me that the area might be cash flow positive. When you look at areas in the CBD, you know, Pretoria and Joburg CBD, your, your, your sunny tide, sunny side, Arcadia, uh, Berea, Heelbrow, those kind of areas, your gross yields are, are quite regularly 15 to 20, maybe even 25 percent, which again is an indication of a very lucrative area. Um, so the, the fact that we're looking at the province as a whole, um, it probably does dilute what some of the specific suburbs could generate from a cash flow perspective. If we look here at Johannesburg, you know, it's only got an 11 percent yield. But as I've mentioned, if you go into the CBD, you're, you're going to be finding a lot of stronger yields. What does interest me about uh, this specific slide when I'm just looking at it, um, uh, you know, at, at a high level, it's definitely the West Rand sitting at 11.7 percent gross yield, uh, which is strong. Uh, you know, so so that's potentially an area that that might become, for lack of a better word, the new Berea. Uh, a lot of people that watch my channel know that I'm a big advocate of Berea and, and really I actually just use Berea as, a, as, an as an example, as a test study or a case study as to what a good area would look like. And I think West Rand might be that next performing area. Uh, Soweto has got a very good strong gross yield, 13.8. It's the best that we're seeing across the board in Johannesburg. The issue is the good standing ratio is very low at 44%, which basically means that 4.4 out of 10 tenants will pay on time um, you know so that's that's a high risk that means that it's a it's got a lot of delinquent kind of behavior uh, Santon you know it's not very strong from the gross yield perspective uh, but it does have a very good good standing ratio probably one of the top that in Midrand um, if we look here at Ikurileni sitting at 11.3 percent for gross yield um, you know, so you're, if, if we're looking at a very high level, and we'll get into more of the detail just now, if we're looking at a very high level, you know, your Kirileni, your Joburg, your, uh, your West Strand are probably going to be, uh, I would say, areas to keep an eye out for. But let's dive into a little bit more detail. This is just to give you a little lay of the land, a bit of a high level review as to what um, the Gauteng market looks like. If we're looking at top performing suburbs within your Johannesburg space, um, you've essentially got the four areas of Johannesburg, right? You've got the East Rand, the, the West Rand, the Northern suburbs, and, uh, and then Johannesburg Central. Uh, you've also got the South of Joburg, um, which I guess is, is kind of also included here in this Johannesburg category. So if we start here by looking at uh, the West Rand, as we've as we've seen recently that the West Rand was quite strong in its performance this year. Uh, we're looking at uh, Horizon View, Krugersdorp Central, <coughs> Witburgi, Amoroso, uh, Florida and Helican Park. I don't really know these areas too much. They aren't my potentially my areas of, of focus. Um, if we're looking here at the, at the stats, so the first thing you want to look at is the blue bar, which is your capital grow, growth rate. You know, another word for it is capital appreciation. So if we're looking in the West Rand area, you can see that Horizon View has got a, you know, let's call it an eight 
eight percent capital appreciation rate, which is very good. Uh, you know, uh, uh, nationwide around across South Africa, the the most recent report that I read is about a four percent is the average capital appreciation on on South Africa as a nation. Um, so Horizon View is doubling that. You know, uh, we look at Krugersdorp Central; it's got a low capital rate. You know, the the, the properties aren't appreciating very regularly in that area. Vitpurki, Amoroso, they are kind of at the six uh, percent category, and then we've got Florida and Helicon Park, which again aren't great from a capital appreciation perspective they're hitting under five percent but you get a sense of you know that the west strand has got maybe a five six maybe seven percent sort of capital appreciation rate the green bar is uh, essentially telling you the effect of yield um, with the red indicating the amount of rent that is lost due to delinquent behavior so you can see here that Horizon View has got an effective yield of roughly 20, 23%. When you minus the chance of delinquent behavior, it drops to about 19%. Now, you know, as I've mentioned on, on several of my other videos, when you have a gross yield that is bordering above 15%, that's a strong sign that it's gonna be a cash flow positive area. A Horizon View, effective yield, so removing the delinquent behavior is sitting at 19%. Uh, Krugersdorp Central sitting at 16% effective yield, um, you know, 21% gross yield, but we obviously want to minus that red bar because that's the, the, the delinquent risk. Uh, Vitpurki is sitting at, you know, 19% gross yield, and then you've got your other three performing areas. So from a West Rand perspective, it's clear Horizon View has got strong capital gains, it's got strong effective yield, it's got low delinquent behavior. Your second best option, in my opinion, would be Krugersdorp Central. It doesn't have the greatest capital appreciation rate, but the effective yield is, is, is quite strong. I mean, the delinquent behavior is also there. Um, if we look at our northern suburbs, you know, so this is this is more known as your as your higher, um, uh, you know, your, your 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 more pristine areas like a Lovo. You know, in my mind, a Lovo is definitely one of your high income suburbs. So we're seeing a very strong um, capital appreciation rate here. You know, let's call it eight nine percent. The gross yield is not bad. It's sitting at about seventeen percent with a low level of delinquency. So a Lovo, you know, I never actually really considered that before. I always thought it was more of an upper income area where, you know, the, 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 the gross yield wouldn't work. But, you know, potentially the data is speaking differently. It, it might be an area to look at. Um, if we look here at the comparison between Blobos Runt and, and, and Fount Fountain Blow, two areas with the same gross yield, but which one is the better investment choice? Well, from the data, it's clear to see that Blobos Run has got a much higher rate or uh, a chance of uh, delinquent behavior. You can see this red bar is substantially higher than the Fountain Blue. So that basically means that Blobos Run has got a lot more chance of delinquent behavior. And on top of that, Fountain Blue has got a stronger cap rate and capital appreciation rate. So, I mean, very clear that uh, Blobos Rand versus Fountain Blue, that, that you'd rather go for the, for the Fountain Blue. Uh, that would probably be my suburb of choice to look at within the northern suburb space. If we go here to Johannesburg in general, uh, which will include your, your south market, but will also include your, your center, your, your central Joburg. So we've got areas like Bellevue, Rembrandt, Rosettenville, Turfontaine, Forest Hill. Those are, you know, very strong areas. That's probably where most of my effort and attention goes to from an investment perspective and Q. So if we look here at Rosettenville, Turfontaine, and Forest Hill, um, you know, those are those are all in the south. Uh, multilet, that's that's the multilet market, or at least from my experience, that's where all my multilets are sitting. The cap rate, you know, you're hovering in, in the south, you're hovering, it seems to be between sort of three and six percent. It's not it's not great. Um, I definitely don't buy in those areas because of the the capital appreciation rate. I, I buy in there because the yields are strong. You can see that the yields here for these three areas are hovering around the you know 18, 18, 19 percent uh, with some strong delinquent behavior. You know, your Rosettenville and Turfontaine are definitely higher risk areas. Um, Forest Hill, uh, from my experience, has been a, a pretty safe area. Um, so, 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 so you definitely want to take that into account where, where the risk is higher. I prefer buying in Forest Hill just because I know the risk is, is lower. One thing that is important to mention that, that Michelle made reference to is that it doesn't matter which area you buy in or the delinquency rate is not really an issue if you've got the right vetting in 
vetting of your of your tenants in place if you vet the right tenants and only place tenants that have got good credit scores have got steady jobs have got good payment behaviors it doesn't matter if you're in the heart of Rosettenville or the heart of uh, Global Strand, you can still have a good and effective investment. And I speak from experience. I've got buildings in Rosettenville, Turfentain and Forest Hill. And although these delinquency rates look quite high and scary, I've actually got very low delinquent behavior at the moment because the vetting up front is done correctly. Q is similar to these three areas. So definitely potentially a multi-let market. Rembrandt, uh, Bellevue, you know if you if you're considering Bellevue view as a as an option i think you know the yields speak for themselves 23 24 percent it's got a strong delinquency risk um but you know definitely probably one of the top performing if not the top performing suburb in in the joburg center market at the moment last but not least we look at the the, the, the east rand so we've got uh, sunny rock primrose uh boxburg Halder, Halderweg, Halderweg, and Kleurkop. <laughs> Jeez, I haven't heard of some of these suburbs. Maybe, maybe you have. Maybe you live in these suburbs. I'm not sure, but it's uh, it's definitely quite a quite a new, uh, new 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 names to look at for me. Uh, so I must say, if I'm looking at this, I like the East Rand market. I'm not seeing that much delinquent behaviour. You know, your Primrose and Boxburg South have got decent. You know five percent chance of delinquent behavior but you you know your your gross yield is sitting at 20 percent all of these are hitting clearly over 15 percent effective yield which is fantastic i would say sunny rock is probably your area to look at in the east rand uh followed maybe by the Haldeveig and clericorp and then you know you can go to primrose you can go to boxburg your yields are going to be there but just make sure you've got your vetting in place because as you can see by by virtue of the red bars the uh, risk is substantially higher there um, in those areas now let's uh, go down to Pretoria uh, or Twane so you know obviously within the Gauteng market your two biggest areas are your Johannesburg and your Twane area so within Twane we've got our, uh, our five different sort of uh, areas of interest uh, starting on the left let's look at Centurion so I mean I'm surprised to be honest I didn't see Centurion being a good investment area for rentals um, I always thought it was more a capital appreciation strategy or a flipping strategy or maybe you know the new builds that's what I you know I play Centurion in that space but clearly the data is a different opinion you've got an area called Rua Vista which is sitting at a 20% effective yield with minimal delinquencies and above 5% capital appreciation. If you're looking for good returns with low risk, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to look much further than that. Your other three areas in Centurion, uh, Erasmia, Valhalla, uh, Littleton, Valhalla sounds cool. Eh? It sounds like a Viking area. Littleton, uh, I mean, your your returns are okay. That That's more what I kind of expected from Centurion, sort of maybe 10, 15% gross yield, you know, very, very safe, very secure kind of market. So if you're interested in the Centurion market, I would say Rua Vista is where you want to go. These three areas are okay, but not shooting the lights out. If we look at uh, uh, CBD of Tuane, or, or formerly known as um, Pretoria, you've got Mukulniuk, Sunnyside, Riviera, Arcadia. So Sunnyside and Arcadia are definitely areas that I've explored myself um, because they, they meet the criteria that you know makes Berea such a great investment area. It's it's densely populated, it's inner city, it's um, you know it's where the economic activity is happening. So I definitely see those two areas being quite um, quite uh, prosperous. Um, Sunnyside specifically for me. Um, Arcadia has got quite a low capital appreciation rate um, but you know I guess you're not really looking for capital appreciation when you go into the inner cities you're looking for cash flow. Mukulniuk is an interesting one it's got the best performance in the CBD area with you know sort of relative risk I think if you're looking at the CBD of Pretoria as an area of investment and you're a low risk investor I would say go Riviera you're gonna have slightly lower returns but the risk that you're taking to get those returns is substantially less than the other three areas. If you're, you know, like me, a, a maybe a, a risk prone kind of investor or someone who's got a high risk appetite, Mukulniuk is where you want to go. Pretoria East. So this is actually where I grew up, funny enough. And uh, yeah, let's see if there's some area, uh, interesting areas here. So we've got Erasmus Park, uh, Moiplas, Brum, Bramira, 
uh, Devolcius, Wingate, Waterkloof, Boardwalk, Pretorius Park. So what, what I'm noticing here is a trend from Pretoria East is that it's got a very steady uh, tenancy profile. I mean, you can see across the board on several different suburbs, there's not a lot of delinquent behavior happening. So if you're a low risk investor, Pretoria East might be the area you wanna to go to. Uh, you know, if you don't wanna deal with difficult tenants. I wouldn't say the yields are great. They, they're pretty average. You know, you're sitting and hovering around the 15% uh, level I, I think Erasmus Park is probably a, a probably the best not only from a, a gross yield or rental perspective but look at the the capital appreciation it's it's the best in in the Tswane area of, of the of the top performing suburbs so you know if you are in the Pretoria East market um, you, you know you're not gonna get difficult tenants you're gonna get a steady amount of capital appreciation your yields are pretty good I would definitely recommend Pretoria East as a safe starting point for a lot of investors. Pretoria North, the Orchids and Durand, Durandia. Don't know those areas at all, but a similar kind of story that Pretoria East is bringing in terms of a low risk of delinquency. The capital appreciation rates are slightly lower, um, but you know those would be the two areas probably to look out for in the north of Pretoria. And then uh, Pretoria West, which, um, you know, I think I think is a probably a very underlooked or overlooked market, and to be honest, I think that's probably where most of my attention is going to go in in, in, in in the following year. Centurion and Pretoria West, from a Tswane perspective, would definitely be my areas of interest. So Pretoria West Central um, is sitting at a very high gross yield. Uh, the delinquency rate is decent for a CBD environment, and the the cap rate is great. And then we've got Andion AH, which. Uh, you know seems pretty similar to your Pretoria East market so now you've seen the Pretoria uh, or the Twane as well as the Joburg market within Gauteng I don't think you're gonna go wrong investing in those uh, suburbs that we've mentioned here obviously you want to make sure that if the risk is high that you do the vetting and that you do the due diligence in the right way so that you do mitigate that risk um, don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video with friends and family or with anyone that you think might be interested. And until next time, happy investing.